Hi, this is Mark from Skywagon University. Today, we're gonna to do a comparison, not in flight, but a comparison between two very similarly priced, similar engine size, similar fuel capacity, similar fuel burn, similar number of seat planes. That is a Piper Archer, and that is a 65 Mooney M20E. Now that's an 84, that's a 65, but we'll get into some detail, but they're very, very similar. And we're just going to talk about high performance, retractable, fixed gear versus retractable, constant speed versus fixed pit, insurance, range, speed, utility, useful load, things like that. Not fly them, just kind of look at two different options because they're both worth about 85 to 90 grand. So you're getting the same plane, the same money, same horsepower, similar, same fuel capacity, same number of seats. So let's have a closer look at them. So closer up and looking at both. First, you can see it's a bit cold today here, Northern California, March, March 20th. Um, within the last two, three weeks, we've had snow here this deep, right here at the airport, on the planes, on the hangars, and up in the mountains is like 350% of normal snowfall, and a lot of standing water and floods and reservoirs full, so we're ready for a dry summer. But here we are, it's a little bit cold, a bit windy today. <clears throat> so here we are looking at the Piper Archer. Archers are a PA-28, they're 180 horsepower, they're like combing, four-cylinder, carbureted. Um, they burn about nine, 10 gallons an hour, and it's an O360. The Mooney over there is a M20E, so it's an IO360. So remember, O is opposed, 360 cubic inch. IO is injected, opposed, 360 cubic inch. So they're both the same displacement, like combing four-cylinder engines. If that was a Mooney M20C, it would actually have a 180 horsepower carbureted 360 in it, exactly like the Archer, but it would be constant speed and this would be fixed pitch. So you're running the same engine, you're burning the same fuel. One is fixed pitch, one is constant speed. So for people who don't know about the detail of that, let's look at what fixed pitch means and constant speed, because some people get confused about constant speed because they think if it's constant, it must be fixed, but it isn't. So a fixed pitch prop is a prop with the blades that are rigid. And sorry to be, you know, talking about basics if you're an airline guy or something. But fixed pitch, it's a bent bit of metal. There's nothing you can do. It's at one setting forever, fixed pitch. You've got throttle and you've got mixture. That's it in it. But on the Mooney, we've got a constant speed prop. So this prop will move in the hub according to where you set it. And by constant speed, it means that in cruise, if you've got it set at 2400 RPM and you dive, stays at 2400. If you climb, stays at 2400. So it stays constant even though it moves. So this is like having an automatic gearbox in a car. It means that it can be flat high, flat pitch, high RPM for takeoff, and then you can coarsen up the blade and set it at a lower RPM for cruise so that you don't have to compromise. A fixed pitch plane is a compromise between high rev and cruise. It's like a car, stick shift car that's in third gear. It'll pull away from the lights, but it's not happy at it. It'll cruise on the freeway, but it's not happy at it. You want first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You want the gears. So this varies to give you the gears. So Moonies are complex. They have a, they have a variable pitch propeller. The fixed pitch Cherokee planes on just fixed pitch, they're much easier to maintain, own, and insure, and we'll go into some more detail about that. Another massive difference between these two is this plane is fixed gear. In other words, undercarriage in England or other places, the wheels are fixed, they don't go up and down. So they have wheel pants on them to make them aerodynamic, skirts, some people call them. So that they, the wheels stay down, it's fixed gear, the propeller is fixed pitch. So that's like a, a trainer, or it's like a easy to ensure lower maintenance plane. Let's go and have a look at the Mooney. Oh, and just here while we're here, they have gas strut shock oleos. They have like a chrome tube and a gas oil mix in it. And there's a, there's a bit of give to it. Like, watch this. If I lift this, watch the gear. So that's suspension. So let's look at the Mooney. So here we are on the Mooney. Gear, obviously retractable. Gear doors, same on the mains. Three rubber discs on the front, four rubber discs on the mains, that's the modern version of the gear. This originally would have had four and five and they would have been thinner. But so this plane's electric gear, it would have been manual gear, but anyway, it's retractable. 
So if people say, what's the difference? What's the benefit? What's the holdback? That plane is easier to own and maintain and insure because there's less moving parts to it because its gear is fixed. However, it has three shock struts on it with gas and oil in them that need to be maintained and looked after. Whereas this, with its rubber discs, I just bounce that one's wing up and down. Watch this, if I go under the Mooney, right on the spar line, and I try to lift it, it's not moving. So the gear is a little bit unforgiving to land because you can't bounce it like you'd bounce that and take up all the slack. Moonies, you've really got to land them nicely because there's not a lot of give. The give literally is tire pressure and rubber discs and there's a bit of knee action on that. So they're quite firm. And the reason Mooney's fuel tanks leak and you hear about them always, my Mooney's leaking, leaking, leaking. They leak because the gear is bolted to the inside of the wheel well, which is the outside of the fuel tank. So the jarring shocks of repeated hard landings on non-maintained rubber discs that have become hard, transfer the shock to the sealant in the tank and then the tank leaks. So if you don't land your Mooney hard, you'll never leak. 50 gallons, 25 a side. 50 gallons, 25 a side. So very similar uh, fuel capacities. Burning nine, burning nine, injected, carbureted. 150 knots, 110 knots. So you think, ooh, 40 knots, I'm burning more fuel. But you're saving the money on the insurance because it's less to insure it because it isn't retractable and it doesn't have a constant speed prop on it. So I'm saying a lot of things twice, but there's a lot of variables in it. You could own that right out of passing you through your private pilot's license and wouldn't be scary to insure it. Your first year insuring a high performance retractable is going to be double that until you get the time and type, and you can't get the time and type until you own one. So you've got to put up with a year of higher insurance while you're getting your ratings, which isn't much, it's a few hour checkout, but you've got to have time and type, you've got to have hours of experience with the constant speed prop and the retractable gear. So inside, people think Moonies are small. Moonies are not much smaller than this. The door is narrow. The door on a Moonie is probably there. It's probably six inches shorter this way. And actually very similar on the top, but you're getting in a smaller hole. You think, oh, it's small inside. Well, here we are on a Cherokee 180. Cherokee 180, Cherokee 140, 160, Warrior, Archer, Arrow, all of those PA28 types of this dimension in the cockpit. So if there were two of us in here, we'd be bumping elbows. The trim is right here. The flaps are right here. The rudder trim's right here. So there's a bit of a throttle. So there's a lot of sort of, you, 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 you know, it's a, it's a four-seater. They're all going to be very similar inside. Where this gains is, behind the seat, there's about four inches when it's all the way back. And when it's forward and flying, there's quite a lot of room in the back. It's an 84, this plane. I covet its rear leg room because that, that Mooney is my Mooney and I always have people in the back and there's no room in the back. But that's the rear seat. And look at the access into the rear seat in a Piper. And it's got a baggage area. We'll look at that in a minute. So internally, let's go over and have a look at the Mooney. So in the Mooney, the seats are always all the way back for easy to get in. So if I were to get in with the seat all the way back, it touches the back seat. It actually physically touches it. You couldn't sit in the back right now with the seats back. But they're only that far back to get in because if I, if I can't reach the rudder, no, that's me trying to reach the rudder pedals with the seat there. So you'd never fly it like that unless you were some sort of Goliath. So if I slide it up to where it is comfortable, which is right about there, very similar width, Slightly narrower door. My hand was in mid-air on the paper there, so it's about there on the paper. If I bring this seat forward, the people in the back get in there. So this is the legroom when you're flying. It's not huge, but it's enough. So they are real four-seaters, and people give them a hard time, but the seat going all the way back is like in a Cherokee 140. They touch so you can get in. So the order of events would be pilot first, always, then Back seat people, strap them in. Front seat, back a little bit because the knees. Last person piles in, door shut. And the room, I mean, I haven't got a big manual flap lever here, but if this was original, it would have been a manual gear lever here, which does get in the way a little bit, but this has electric gear. Flaps are here, trim is here, throttle is here. So it's gonna be very similar to the Piper inside. And always remember, this is a 65, that's an 84. If that was a 65, it would be a very early Cherokee 180, and it would actually have a shorter fuselage. So it's not a very fair comparison there, because 
This plane is more advanced than that plane, and it's a 65, and that's an 84. It's a 19 years difference, and it's faster. And it's mine. This is my Mooney. It gets filmed a lot because it's handy. And then, okay, let's get out and look at both their baggage doors. Baggage doors. Type of baggage door. Very typical. This would be on... Not 140s, but it'll be on 160s, it'll be on Warriors, it'll be Cherokee 180s, Cherokee 1 Arrows, Archers, Tapered Wings, Hershey Bar Wing, all of them are going to have this configuration. A little button you press there, lift that up, there's a strap, clips on here, stays open, 200 pounds, access. So you shove everything in there. It's hard to put stuff up here unless you go in on the top of the back, you know, and fill it up from above. But it's a big baggage area. It doesn't have carpet in this one. And there's a little hat shelf up there for your hat. I always put my hat up there and my gloves in the glove box. So Piper, right side, just as you're getting in. Let's look at the Mooney. Mooney baggage door. Oh no, where is it? Oh, there it is. The reason it's up here, these things go over center and they can bend. You have to be pretty careful with them, the little latches. 120 pounds, 200 pounds. Useful load, just under a thousand pounds. Useful load, just under a thousand pounds. 50 gallons, 50 gallons. So 50 pound difference in baggage, but overall the same useful load, gross weight, a useful load. The reason the baggage door is here, which I find very useful, I mean, if you're lifting a cooler in, it's difficult because it's down in the hole, but you can fill it to here because you're filling it from above. You can fill it up, you can get at it over the back seat. There's a hat shelf back here, luckily, for my hats. But the reason there isn't one here is because underneath the skin in a Mooney, there's a steel frame that goes from the engine mount to about here of tubular tube, tubes, tubes, metal, that cross over and zigzag around the plane, giving it its fuselage structure. So you can't have a baggage door and cut right through the middle of the structure. So they put it up above and you never slam it. You just close it down and close it. So I find that actually very useful. Step, since we're here, Mooney step, it wants to be aerodynamic, it wants to be sleek, it wants to be efficient. When you fire up the engine, the vacuum created by the engine, the vacuum pump, sucks up the step, so it's flying with it up. And when you shut the engine down, boom, step appears. Piper, there's enough stuff hanging down already, wheels and things, so the Piper step is fixed. What else? Tails. Let's go and see a tail of two planes. Tails. Very conventional on a Piper. Fixed, rudder, stabilator. The whole thing moves, very Pipery, and it's longer on an Archer. Cherokee 180, Cherokee 140, they end at this rivet line. Archers, Warriors, Senecas, they, they keep on going out. There's four extra trivia. These internal grooves on a Piper, pre-65, were out. I think I said that in another video, but if you didn't see that video, if you ever see a Cherokee that's got Inies on the vertical and outies on the horizontal, it's a 65. If they're all outies, it's a 64 and older. And if they're all inies, it's newer than 65, which is kind of irrelevant because this is an 84 and it's an archer. But anyway, so the tail, whole thing is trim tab on the back, whole thing moves. It's not fixed with an elevator on it. And this stays still, which might sound like a stupid thing to say, but we're going to look at the Mooney now. So the tail of the Mooney, it's a long tail. No, tail of the Mooney, fixed horizontal and a normal elevator and it's all push rods so I'm not going to waggle it too hard because I'm moving push rods that's another thing we'll talk about in a bit normal rudder vertical fin but when you trim it the entire tail moves not just this not just no, the the vertical fin moves so if we look under I mean I've done this more in another video but if you haven't seen that one this panel here if you undo those five screws and take that off there's a gap with a scissor action and a hinge and a jack screw that shortens and lengthens to trim the tail. And by shortening and lengthening that, this bit moves forward and back. This gap will close and open. So you're moving the entire tail when you trim it. And it's a jack screw on a hinge, very, very strong. And it's an excellent way of removing the need for a trim tab. And a trim tab is drag. And Moonies don't like drag because they're fast. So Al Mooney, genius, he made this tail and people ask, why is it on backwards? Slopey tail, normal looking, backwards, weird. The reason they're on backwards, I've heard, and if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments, when it stalls, 
It's easier to recover from a stall with a vertical fin leaning forward into the stalled air than a sloped fin that's only sloped so it looks cool. That's really why the only reason they are. The leading edge of the tail of a Mooney is flat, flat, flat. The whole thing. It's all about aerodynamics. So, as I just mentioned, control cables. What is a control cable? Obviously, it's a cable that operates the controls from the oak. Moonies don't have them. It's a push rod. And we had a Cessna that broke its aileron cable, parked. It had its gus lock in, and the wind was moving its ailerons. And I looked out, and both ailerons were down. I thought, that thing doesn't have a Robertson stall kit. Why are they? And I went out, wiggled it, yoke didn't move. Aileron cable had just snapped where it had been rusted. So another one has been put in it. But that would never have happened in a Mooney watch. So it's very small movement. That's full up full down. Look at the deflection on the oaks. It's tiny. If that was a Cessna or a Piper, you'd be like 180-ing it completely over. That's full range of motion and it doesn't limit how it flies. It's not like, oh, I wish I had more. These things will land in 30 knot crosswinds. They're excellent, actually, in a crosswind. But that is a control cable. Heim joints, push rods, bell cranks, up to the oaks. There's not cable in it, including trim. So the trim's on a jack screw. The tail is uh, operated by actuators, which you can actually see under here. There's the rudder. It's in full view. I won't push it too hard because it steers the nose wheel. And then underneath, you can see the rod end actuator right here, and this is what's making it move. And I'm, you can hear the clunking and the grinding of everything happening inside the plane. So let's go over and have a look at the Piper that does have control cables. So here we are at the Piper. Aileron travel. Is, there's, more, there's more travel. Look at the yokes going crazy. They go literally right over 180 degrees. And that's just a normal bell crank with a cable, the usual that you'll see in most planes. Same with the tail. Yokes, full travel, trim tab moving, control cables. So that's kind of unique to Moonies to have those push rods. I kind of like it. It's very positive control. In the air, it feels very, very positive. So, uh, what else? So why would you own each one of these? I mean, what is the benefit? So, imagine if they both had 3,000 hours total time, and they both had 300 hour engines, which weirdly that does, that's its times. If they were both the same, same radios, same price, same engine, same fuel burn, same fuel capacity, same useful load, you'd think, oh, I'm gonna go to Mooney, because it's faster. Well, the reason you'd buy an Archer is because it's simpler to fly, simpler to own, simpler to buy, simpler to resell, because more people can fly it, um, simpler to maintain. But the main considerations would be complexity. So if you were, say you were 75 and you owned one of those and your insurance is four grand a year and you're thinking, damn, I gotta keep flying, but I'm gonna save some money. You'd buy something like this, which would go slower. So you're burning the same fuel, but you're going 30 knots slower but you save that in the ownership of it because it's got fixed gear and it's fixed pitch. Four people, you know, you, you wouldn't want to go to Aspen in August with your encyclopedias. You know, you'd want to keep it sort of, uh, you know, be more careful with weather and wind and, and uh, high altitude flying in a, in a fixed pitch, fixed gear, slower plane. The Mooney, for some reason, although it's got uh, the same engine, and its extra speed goes to altitude and cruises faster and you can get over weather in it because it's high performance, it's complex, it's fuel injected, carbureted, so that doesn't have carb ice. So if you're in icing conditions and flying an IFR, you'd want injection. This is carbureted, you have carb heat in it. Um, insurance, I would say, I pay, I've got quite a few hours, that plane is worth about 80 grand. I'd say that its insurance is, is about 1700 a year is what I'm paying for that. This plane, if I insured it, it would cost me about $900 a year. So there's a big consideration there. So if you were to annual each, I mean, I keep saying, think of them as the same year because you can get them in similar years, but they're very close. So we're just gonna pretend they are. If you were to annual each, this does not need to be jacked up and have its gear swung. This does not have an electric motor in its belly to run the gear system like that. If that was a manual gear, it would be actually easier to run and maintain. Somebody changed it in the past as an upgrade. I would prefer it to be the manual gear because there's less maintenance. So in an annual, you've got a four cylinder like combing, carbureted, compression check, oil change, cowling off, pretty easy. 
very similar to that, but you've got fuel injection. So there's one more thing there, you've got injectors. And I recently had a hot cylinder in that and it was a plugged injector, which this wouldn't do, but this will get carb ice. So no carb ice, blocked injector. Not blocked injector because it doesn't have any, but it might get carb ice. Um, the jacking up is an extra thing, like I was just saying. The uh, inspection through the airframe of each. Moonies are subject to a service bulletin that inspects their tubular steel structure for rust. This doesn't have rust because it doesn't have a tubular steel structure. So there's pluses and minuses to both. I would say that to annual this, an average shop without any major squawks is probably going to run you two and a half grand. The Mooney, maybe a grand more because of the extra labor and time. Here's something that's specific to Mooney M20Cs, Es, Fs and Gs. That rhymes. Not the J and the K. Those are 201, 231s. Those four older Moonies, mine's an E, they have an access bay here for avionics. If I needed to pull a gyro out of this or a radio out of this, you got to lie on your back, take out the seats, reach up into the abyss of wires and rat's nests and undo screws and feed it out. And it's a real um, gymnastical event because you can't get it anything from out here. But let's go and look at the Mooney. Here we are on a Mooney. This panel, so engine forward to there, Undo these screws, top comes off. Undo these, they're all quarter turn. The sides come off, so you've got the whole engine exposed. These, once that's off, this tucks under. Once that's off, you peel it back. It's got like sealant under here because it'll leak. That's the bad side. But the good side is once this is off, you're looking at the top of the panel, the radios. And I once had a switch break, my ignition switch broke at an airport where there was no services or facilities or FBO or any shop or anything. So I had to go and get another one and come back with a mechanic and fix it. And he fixed it like this. That was off. He's in there, put in the thing, working on the back, swapping the wires, putting the, it didn't even get in the plane. Didn't even get in it. And you can maintain the whole vacuum system, all the servo, everything in the autopilots and all the radios and gyros is accessible from the outside. And people say Moonies are hard to work on. They're not. So I wanted to compare two planes that were different but similar, like, you know, retractable, fixed gear, blah, 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 fixed pitch, you know, high performance, you know, I wanted to, that plane exists as a high performance. If that plane had a constant speed prop and retractable gear, it's the arrow, of course. And then the 68, 69, and 70 arrows were 180 horse, like these as an M20C were 180 horse. So a 180 horse arrow is a very similar comparison to a 180 horse Mooney. That plane, retractable with a constant speed prop, 70 or newer, is an arrow with a 180, with, sorry, with a 200 in it. So it would be 200 injected, an arrow, just like this. It would be constant speed prop, just like this. It'd be retractable gear, just like this. But the comparison was not to show this versus an arrow, because that would be like the same plane. What I wanted to do here was talk about the differences between constant speed props and retractable gear on these two planes. And I had them both in and I thought it was easy. Well, this one's always here because I own it. But um, I thought it would be uh, an interesting comparison as to why you'd have a fixed gear or a fixed pitch versus high performance retractable. So I hope it answers some questions. Uh, this is Mark at Skywagon University. Uh, thanks for watching. And if you liked it, subscribe. There's a thingy down here, subscribe. And there's a bell, click on the bell. That'll give you a ding and a notification when there are others. And now that the blizzards of 23 have abated, we're going to be doing more videos and the next one will be on a uh, 1997 RV6A nose wheel, A is nose wheel, and we'll fly that one and it's excellent and we might even roll it. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did.